Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our community service. How good it is for all of us to be together on this beautiful Shabbat morning. Sing with me, please. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome. We are, as always, happy to be praying with you on this fine morning. Uh, the weekly Shabbat weather report out the window in front of me uh, is that today is a confused day. Yesterday was very, very cold. Tomorrow is going to be very, very cold, and today is beautiful, uh, which is strange and gives you um, a little bit of of like whiplash right it was like I had all the warm stuff out and then now today don't need it so much and then I'll need it again and this is I think the the transition that we go through when we change seasons sometimes right eventually it will stop being 70 degrees I mean in it maybe I don't know <laughs> Colorado uh, but we start to have more cold right and so we ease ourselves into what is coming next. That's always such a gift to be able to ease in as opposed to drop in. Have a day in the 20s, have a day of shorts. Um, in the same way that we often ease into Shabbat, right? When we come together on Friday night and it's sort of a gentle delivery into Shabbat. And then when we wake up on Saturday morning, we're deeply entrenched in it, but it wasn't a, wasn't a stark change. And so, uh, we hope that this weekend has been a nice easing into the cold weather and you have eased into Shabbat. Um, and uh, yeah, and so with that, we prepare ourselves. I'm Emily Hyatt. I'm Rabbi Emily Hyatt. This is Steve Brodsky. Um, we're we're going to ease ourselves into this service now, this morning. Quick transition for those of you that was in Torah study, that were in Torah study with us. So we're going to join together with these words of preparation for prayer. When I pray, when I quiet my mind and open my heart, I become a priest, a priestess in the house of God. Together, God, I love your house, your habitation, the dwelling place of your glory. 
Let me serve you with my hands, with the toil of healing the world, with the labor of kindness and compassion. I will become your abode of love and charity, of thanksgiving and peace, doing your will in joy, rejoicing in your work. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. Let my life become a temple, a sanctuary of praise and service, and you will dwell in me. My God, I thank you for my life, body, and soul. Help me to realize that I am someone new, someone who never existed before, someone original and unique in the world. May I be fully present to this awesome day. May my body and my soul be ready to do your work, unifying and strengthening one another, linked and renewed daily by your breath. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofei Chobasar Umafli La'asot. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. We've 
given thanks for our bodies, and now we give thanks for our souls. God, the soul that you have given me, that you have breathed into me, that within me you sustain, is a pure one. given the mind the ability to distinguish day from night. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam who opens the eyes of the blind. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam who frees the captive. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam who lifts up the fallen. Stretches the earth over the waters. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, who strengthens our steps. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, who clothes the naked. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, who gives strength to the weary. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Who removes sleep from the eyes, slumber from the eyelids.
blessings for the miracles that we experience every day cause us to stop and to recognize that wondrous, miraculous things are happening around us at every moment. So I invite you to take a moment to share your own personal blessing for a miracle that you've witnessed this past week, something extraordinary that's happened in your life that you are grateful for. Take a moment, you can follow the formula, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melcha Allah, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe. And then say whatever you're thankful for, or whatever miracle you might have witnessed this week. We'll give you a moment to do that. We have said thank you for our bodies. We have said thank you for our souls. And now we thank God for our minds, our brains, our intellectual capacity, the ability we have to learn and to struggle and to think. And so we start together by saying the blessing over the study of Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to engage with words of Torah. And we take this moment to engage our brains and to study words of our tradition, words of teaching. We have been working our way through this wonderful book called Every Day, Holy Day, 365 Days of Teachings and Practices from the Jewish Tradition of Musar. And we uh, are in the fourth week of learning about uh, the trait of modesty. Um, and just like so many other times when we read the, the uh, teaching for the week, it's like, wow, that, that really hits home. We can really see how these ancient teachings and, and these words from Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg who lived, you know, in the early part of the of this century um, really reflect what we see in the world around us today and are so relevant for our own to our own experience and so we'll read this together modesty is not about being covered up but about awareness of a private life and a personal dignity today this concept of private dignity does not exist as a result everything is flaunted Everything is public. Now, again, you have to remember that he, th this, this Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg probably wrote this. He lived until, until the late 90s, but he probably wrote this in the 40s or the 50s, long before the age of social media, long before Jeffrey Tubin ever got on a Zoom call, long before um, everything in the world was as public as it is today and long before we had the ability for news to travel as quickly and for um, every little incident that might happen to be so widely known. Um, so it's really interesting to think about that in, in terms of where we are today versus where we were uh, probably at the time that this was originally written. Um, and we, you know, we've struggled a little bit with these, these uh, quotations about modesty. Modesty is not about being covered up, although in some places in the Jewish community, modesty is about being covered up in some other communities as well, but about awareness of a private life and a personal dignity. 
Um, you know, the, the question comes up, is anything private anymore? Um, there's this amazing uh, uh, documentary, uh, I think it's on Netflix, it's called The Social Dilemma, which talks about how um, nothing is private anymore. Every Google search that you do, every email that you send, every transaction that you make online, every post on Facebook, every, every interaction uh, with social media uh, is logged and tracked and um, cataloged and oftentimes sold uh, to someone else who is looking to profit off of whatever it is that you're searching for. You all know how, you know, you search for, I don't know, basketball on Google. You're looking to buy a basketball and suddenly uh, in your Facebook feed, every ad pops up trying to sell you a basketball. They know they are tracking you and it's just incredibly amazing. So this question of, is there such a thing as a private life? And in that situation, how do we keep our personal dignity and our private dignity when it doesn't exist? Um, you know, there's also interestingly a really strong connection to this week's Torah portion from this teaching. There's a very obscure little part of the of this week's story of Noah that we don't often talk about. Um, and maybe there's a good reason for that. But there's a little story at the very end after they have uh, the flood has uh, receded and the ark has landed and they've left the ark. Um, there's this short little incident um, that is very powerful in terms of this teaching. And it talks, uh, I'll read it for you. Um, Noah's, uh, no, uh, so they land and they, they go out of the ark and Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, um, leave the ark. And from them, the whole earth was populated. Noah, a man of the soil, was first to plant a vineyard. He drank of the wine and grew drunk and exposed himself under his tent. Now, first of all, we have to understand that the, the Hebrew is very nuanced and very complex, and it doesn't always translate easily and cleanly into English, but it tells us that basically Noah became drunk and exposed himself under his tent. Ham, uh, who became the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and outside told his two brothers. Shem and Japheth took a cloak and put it on both their shoulders. They walked backward and covered their father's nakedness. Facing backward, they did not see their father's nakedness. Now, the story goes in another direction after that, and we could spend hours and hours discussing this, but there's this idea that, that one brother comes in and sees his father exposed and runs to tell his brothers, right? Whereas the other two brothers, what's their response? They walk in backwards, hiding their faces with a cloak, and they cover their father. Uh, to preserve his dignity, to not embarrass him. Um, there's all kinds of other implications uh, that can be read into this text, and it gets really complex. But I think at a very basic level, and trying to tie it to this, this uh, teaching of Musar, is that everyone deserves dignity, right? And sometimes people say things or do things or act in ways that might embarrass themselves. And it's up to us to minimize that to not make a big deal about it, to not run and point it out to everyone. Oh, look at this. Did you see that? Um, and, you know, in Torah study earlier, uh, we were talking a lot about um, this human inclination to do evil. Um, and it's, it's hard to, to keep that under control. And it's hard to not gossip and to not spread stories and to not forward the link to the um, lurid story that we saw on, on Facebook or on the uh, TMZ or wherever it might be. But we all have an obligation to each other to protect not only our own dignity and our own privacy, but that of others. And I think that that's what um, Rabbi Weinberg is trying to teach us here today, that it's difficult. It's very hard. The world, there's nothing private. Uh, it's very hard to um, recover from something if you do something stupid or uh, unintentional or, uh, you know, you make a mistake and but we have to give people the benefit of the doubt. That, that in itself is a Jewish value. And we have to honor one another's dignity, especially in these very difficult times when people feel like they have the freedom to say anything they choose on social media without repercussion. I think we all have to 
be very aware of this idea of privacy and dignity and helping other people maintain their dignity. So let's go to our phrase and our practice for the week. Wise privacy bestows dignity. I think it wasn't until this week's teaching that I really understood what that phrase was trying to say. Wise privacy bestows dignity. In our practice, whatever you might be tempted to flaunt, whether body, ideas, wealth, or any other gift, keep it hidden. And so with that, we say our concluding blessing over that beautiful study of our text and very, very relevant application of it. O oh Adonai, our God, let the words of Torah be sweet in our mouths and the mouths of your people Israel so that we, our descendants, and the descendants of all your people Israel may know you by studying your Torah for its own sake. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hamelamed Torah Le'amo Yisrael, Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to your people, Israel. Tune up a little bit here. As we conclude the Birchot HaShachar opening section of our service, our morning blessings, and we begin to move into Shema Uvir Koteha, the Shema and her blessings, the next section of our service, we say these words of Psalm 150, Hallelujah, praise to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah.
I invite you to rise either physically or spiritually as you are able as we join in the Baruch Hu, our call to worship. Yeah, la, 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 la. Yai lai 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 Yai lai 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 Yai lai 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 Warechu et Adonai Hamevo Adonai Hambora Leolam Vahed Leolam 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 Adonai Elohinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer Or Uvarei Choshech, Ose Shalom Uvarei Et Hakol. Praised are you, Adonai our God, Sovereign of the Universe, Creator of light and darkness, who makes peace and fashions all things. In mercy you illumine the world and those who live upon it. In your goodness you daily renew creation. How numerous are your works, Adonai, in wisdom you formed them all, filling the earth with your creatures. Be praised, Adonai, our God, for the excellent work of your hands for the, and for the lights you created. May they glorify you. Shine a new light upon Zion, that we all may swiftly merit its radiance. Praised are you, Adonai, creator of all heavenly lights. Baruch atah Adonai, Yotzer HaMeorot. How deeply you have loved us, Adonai, our God, gracing us with surpassing compassion. On account of our forebears, whose trust led you to teach them the laws of life, be gracious to us, teaching us as well. O oh, merciful one, have mercy on us by making us able to understand and discern, to heed, learn, and teach, and lovingly to observe, perform, and fulfill all that is in your Torah. Enlighten our eyes with your Torah, focus our minds on your mitzvot, unite our hearts and love and reverence for your name. Then we will never feel shame, never deserve rebuke, and never stumble. Having trusted in your great and awesome holiness, we shall celebrate your salvation with joy. Gather us in peace from the four corners of the earth and lead us upright to our land. For you, O oh God, work wonders. You chose us. Truly, you drew us near to your great name that we may acknowledge you, declaring you one in love. Praise be you, Adonai, who chooses your people Israel in love. Baruch Ata Adonai, Habucher Ba'amo Yisrael, Ba'ahava. Open up our eyes, teach us how to live, fill our hearts with joy and all the love you have to Gather us in peace as you lead us to your name, and we will know that you are one, and we will know that you are one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, 
Join with me as we chant Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha uvechol meodecha Ve'hayu hadevarim ha'ele Asher anochi mitzavcha Hayom alivavecha Vishinantam levanecha Vidibarta bam Veshivtecha bevetecha Uvlechtecha vaderech Uvshochbecha uvkumecha Ukshar tam leot al yadecha, veha yule totafot bene necha, uchtav tam al mezuzot betecha, uvisha recha, leman tis keru va asitem et kol mitzvotai, vi tem kedoshim lelohechem. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Asher hotzeiti erchem, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, Liot lachem l'Elohim. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Amen. The Israelites walked into the Reed Sea one foot at a time. What were they thinking about as the water rose up their legs, chilling their hearts, advancing toward their open mouths together? We all continue to walk here now, one foot at a time, on our better days, forward. Alone I cannot reach the far, sh the far shore without drowning. Somehow I don't go under. The person to my right holds me up. Something I cannot see holds him up. Blessed is the source of help so often unexpected. I step forward. The sea is vast. Blessed are you, gracious one, for your miracles that greet us every day. I lie, I lie, lie.
Zur Yisrael, Rock of Israel, rise in support of Israel and redeem Judah and Israel as you promised. Our Redeemer, Adonai Tzvaot, is your name. Blessed are you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ga'al Yisrael. And we prepare now for our tefillah. Prayer invites God's presence to suffuse our spirits, God's will to prevail in our lives. Prayer may not bring water to parched fields or mountains, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city, but prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. We rise either physically or spiritually for the tefillah. Adonai sifatai tiftah Ufiyagid tehilatecha Adonai sifatai tiftah Ufiyagid tehilatecha Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha El Hagadol Hagibor Vehanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol. Vizocher chaste avot ve imahot, ume vige ula liv nevenehem, le ma anshimo be ahava, mele hozer, umoshia uma gain, baruchata donai, ma gain avraham, ve ezrat sara. Atagi borle olam adonai mechaye ha kolata rav lehoshia. Mashiv ha ruach umorid ha gashem. Michal kel chaim bechesed. Mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim. So mech noflim virofech olim. Umatir asurim. Umekaye memunato lishene afar. Michamocha baal givurot. Umidomelach. Melech me meet umechaye umat me ach yeshua. Vene emana talehachayot ha kol. Baruchata donai mechaye ha kol. Mekadeshet shimcha baolam. Shame Shimaki Shimo Tobishme Marom Kakatu Vayat Nevieha Mekaraz El Zeme Amar Kadosh 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 Adonai Tseba Dear 
Adi Renu Adonai Adonenu Madir Shimcha Bechol Haaretz Baruch Kibod Adonai Mimkobo Echadu Eloheinu Uabinu Humakeinu Umoshie We take a moment now for silent prayer, the prayers in our minds and in our hearts, and we'll come back together in a moment with a prayer for peace. Israel, a 
בשלום, בשלום. שים שלום, טוב על ברכה, כן בחסד ורחמים עלינו, ועל כל ישראל עמך. שים שלום, טוב על ברכה. We arrive now at our Torah service. We, as usual, take a moment first to do a little bit of thinking and learning about the Torah portion. Um, and perhaps it's just because I happened to be on duty for our sermon last night and Torah study this morning and now, but I am feeling like deeply invested in the different pieces of, um, of Parshat Noach, where we are right now. And, you know, thinking about what it means to tackle three different pieces of a Torah portion um, in, a, in a collective manner. And so last night we talked about um, the Parsha as a whole, and how actually there's one whole lesson to pull from there, um, from the story of Noah all the way into the story of Babel. This morning in Torah study, we talked about the covenant with God that was made at the end of the flood um, and, and the sign of the rainbow. And there's this one piece, and Steve actually mentioned it earlier, and I'm really glad he did because it gave us a chance to start thinking about it. There's this like weird hidden piece of the Parsha of the story of Noah. That it's not that we ignore it. It's just that like when, especially in the juvenile version, right, when we're talking about kids, we certainly, um, we certainly uh, like uh, don't talk about it with kids. In, in what happens is the ark lands and the waters dry up and they've been on the ark for a really long time. Um, and in fact, we looked at it this morning. The, the time span that they actually spend in the ark, Noah's family and all of the animals, is almost a year. It's from the second month, the 17th day of the 600th year of Noah's life. The ark leaves its dry land and it does not get back again until the first month uh the 27th day or the second month the 27th day of um the 601st year of noah's life that's a year and 10 days it's a really long time in an ark with a lot of animals and your family and one window and so they land and they get off of the ark and what happens almost immediately, which is fascinating, is that um, Noah plants a vineyard. And our rabbis have a lot to say about the rest of this story. And just to recap, in case you um, missed it when Steve was talking about it earlier in Musar, Noah plants a vineyard and he gets drunk. And he, um, his sons find him exposed in his tent. Well, we don't really know what that means. Like, is he walking around flashing people? God forbid. Is he naked in his own space? Maybe. Do we um, know that there is a whole concept of nakedness that's just settling in for these people given what happened in the Garden of Eden? They did not know they were naked and then they knew they were naked. So maybe nakedness has its whole um, other meaning that we don't really understand or know about in our world today. Hard to, hard to say. Either way, Noah plants a vineyard, makes wine, and gets drunk. And um, what the Torah says is Noah, this man of the earth, he debased himself, that's the English, but the Hebrew is Vayachel, Vayachel Noach, and planted, and he planted a vineyard. Now, it's interesting, once we start taking apart the language, because Vayachel comes from the root word Chol, or Chulin, 
which we know is, uh, is a really important word in Shabbat. Why? We'll come back to it. We understand that Noah is a righteous person, and we see this as his spiritual fall. But is it? Chol is what we say during Havdalah. We make a mavdil, hamavdil ben kodesh lechol. We separate between what is holy and what is chol, what is kodesh, holy, and what is chol, profane, regular, not holy, secular. It has all these meanings, chol. And so it's a really interesting thing to think about. Vechulin vayachel Noach. And Noah profaned himself. And so when we read that in the text, I think what we, what we immediately think is Noah sinned. Noah debased himself. Noah, after this amazing experience being the righteous, the only righteous among the generation, Noah falls from grace and plants a vineyard and gets drunk and gets naked possible. But what else do we know about the way that we separate the end of Shabbat from the rest of the week? We say hamavdil ben kodesh lechol, ben kodesh lechol, and we don't understand that as debasement. When we go back at the end of this night to the regular week, when we end Shabbat, we are not sinning. We're not debased. We're not profane. We're just normal. We're just regular. We're just in a place that's not super holy. So if Noah, Vayachel Noah, if Noah builds this, uh, plants a vineyard and gets himself a little drunk, is he defamed? Is he profaning? Or is he just coming down from the incredible pressure of being so righteous, being so holy. Maybe he just has taken a moment to uh, do his thing, right? To just like live in his world and not be the only righteous guy for a little while. We have all kinds of texts that we see in, and not that I'm an advocate for this, but perhaps we will extrapolate from it, but we have texts um, in our Proverbs that say that when you feel bitter of soul, have a little wine. <laughs> we have a text that says in our um, in Psalms, wine will gladden the hearts of man. Maybe the pressure of being the most righteous of the generation, of being on an ark with every animal ever known to God, and uh, with your entire family, with one window, with no land for an entire year, just started to take a toll on Noah. And so the vineyard though only one of many options, was just a little self-care. Maybe he got off that ark and was like, Whew, that was a lot. And so he planted himself a vineyard and had himself some wine. And his family had never seen such behavior and how they dealt with it and the effects of wine, which I'm sure we've all experienced or seen someone else experience can be, uh, can lead to a little humiliation. He didn't hurt anybody, which is good. So what do we know about that? What does it mean? Uh, it's, a, it's a really good question. And so here we are, October 24th, and uh, our world is hard. The pandemic is <sighs> raging, right? And numbers are growing and our restrictions are growing with it. And we have really high limitations on what we're allowed to do and with who and when and where. And it's a lot longer and a lot further along than we thought it was going to be. And we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, especially those of us that are um, dealing with working from home or parenting from home while we're working from home, while kids are at home in school, right? There's all kinds of different pieces of this. And I just think that maybe this story of Noah and the wine teaches us that we're not supposed to be holy all the time. We're not supposed to be the most righteous all the time. And that it is okay to take a minute for yourself. Maybe that doesn't mean planting your own vineyard and getting drunk, but it might mean taking a little break from the expectation of holiness. 
And if we read the, the story of Noah as a whole, it doesn't end by saying he was no longer the most righteous or that he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have righteousness in him. And perhaps we're allowed to be regular sometimes, even if we're holy, to be normal, to be um, hurting or having anxiety or in pain or worrying or suffering or whatever it may be. And so I think that's the lesson of Noah. And uh, even more important, when we're not at our holiest, when we're not at our holiest, or when someone we know or love is not at their holiest, we have two options, just like Steve said. We can look at them and judge them and tell other people, or we can just quietly give them a little bit of space, cover them up, give them some privacy for the moment of uh, normal, when we're not being holy, when they're not being holy, and then know that we'll all come back from it. And so with that, I wish that each of you always strive for holiness when you can, but don't forget that maybe this week or next week or at some point, we all need to be a little bit less holy sometimes and just be normal. That's why we have cycles of time and Shabbat and things like that, which allow us to be in a model in which we are sometimes striving for the best and sometimes we're just not, and that is okay. And so that is my prayer for you this Shabbat as we enter into our Torah reading. And we are going to welcome a number of people who are going to help us right now on our other Facebook page. We are celebrating uh, Noah Neuberger becoming a bar mitzvah this morning. And so his parents, Deb Nobleman and Marty Neuberger, are going to do the pre and post Torah blessings for us this morning. We are going to hear the Torah chanted by the lovely Shauna Han, who did such a wonderful job. We get to hear it last night. And Danny Foster, thank you, thank you to our president of our board of trustees, who is going to um, additionally read us the translation so that we can know what we are reading about. And so with that, I am going to um, invite Deb and Marty to lead us in the blessings before the reading of the Torah in just a moment. They will come on screen. Here we go. Okay. Baruch Hu Ed Adonai Hamavara Baruch Adonai Hamavarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim Benatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. Vayhi chol ha'aretz, safa echad udvarim achadim. Vayhi benos'a mikedem, vayimtsu vik'a be'eret shin'ar vayishu sham. Vayamru, ish el rehu hava nilbena levinim v'nisrefa l'israfa v'tehi lahem halvena la'aven v'achimar haya lahem lachomer. Vayamru, hava nivne lanu ir u'migdal v'rosho v'ashamayim. ונעשה לנו שם, פן נפוץ על פני כל הארץ. וירד אדוני, לראות את העיר ואת המגדל אשר בנו בני האדם. ויאמר אדוני, הן עם אחד בשפה אחת לכולם, וזה החילם לעשות, ואתה לא יבצר מהם כל אשר יזמו לעשות. הווה נרדה ונבלה שם, שפתם אשר לא ישמעו איש שפת רעהו, ויפץ אדוני אותם משם על פני כל הארץ, ויחדלו לבנות העיר. על כן קרא שמה בבל, כי שם בלל אדוני שפת כל הארץ, ומשם הפיצם אדוני על פני כל הארץ. All the earth had the same language and the same words. As they wandered from the east, they came upon a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. Then the people said to one another, come, let us make bricks and fire them hard. So they had bricks to build with and tar served them as mortar. Then they said, come, let us build a city with a tower that reaches the sky 
so that we can make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over all the earth. Then the Eternal came down to look at the city and tower the people had built. And the Eternal One said, Look, these are all one people and one language, and this is just the beginning of their doings. Now no scheme of theirs will be beyond their reach. Let us go down there and confuse their speech so that no one understands what the other is saying. So it came about that the Eternal scattered them over. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet, V'chaye Olam Natah Betoheinu, Baruch Atah Adonai, Noten HaTorah. Beautiful. Thank you so much to all of our Torah readers and blessers and translator this, translators this Shabbat. That was really um, lovely. We take a moment now for the Misha Berach, our prayer for healing, as we think of all of those in our world that are in need of our prayers and blessings uh, this morning. And as always, we will stop in the middle for just a moment so that we can invite you to share names, so that we can share names, and so that we can all hold all those who are in need of healing together. Today we are praying for Zachary Hoffman, David Karner, David Lustig, Natalie Moser, Corey Franklin, Jeff Cohn, David Goldenberg, Stuart Myers, Jerry Butter, Michael Rose, Kathy Steinberg, Catherine Plus, Catherine Plus Vicki Adams, Jean Silber, Scott Grant, David Horowitz, Michelle Handler, Shanti Hazan, Robert Tucker, Jennifer Brynan, Lynn Pollitt, Lynn McLaughlin Cromar, Cynthia Friedland, Dana Huss, Betsy Appel, Robin Huss, Joe Kaufman, Devorah Miriam Batya Hudit, Joanne Wilner Potts, Howard Rosenberg, Scott Reich, and Beverly Rouleau. And of course, we are praying in addition this Shabbat for all those who are impacted by the terrible wildfires in our beautiful mountains and in our state. We read during our tefillah, God causes the winds to return and the rain to fall. And so with that, we pray for calm winds and healing and, cle and cleansing rains to help control the devastation caused by these fires. We pray for the safety of those on the front lines who are battling the blazes and caring for those most affected. And we pray that all those in the paths of fires find hope, healing, and an end to their suffering. And we say together, Baruch Ata Adonai Makor Harafua. Blessed are you, Adonai, the source of all healing.
As we move toward the conclusion of our service, I invite you to rise physically or spiritually for Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach la'adon ha'kol La'tet gedula le'otzer b'reshit Shelo asanu kigoye ha'ratzot Velo samanu kemishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chalkenu kahem Vegor aleinu kechol ha'monam Ba'anachnu korim u'mishtachavim u'modim Lifnei melech malchei ha'amlachim Ha'kadosh baruchu turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation who have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. And on this Shabbat, we are thinking of those that we have lost in the last week, Selma Teitelbaum and Arlene Wedgel. Those that we have lost in the last month, Maxine Devine, Anne Clemens Harrison, Paul Kamensky, and Sheldon Levy. And we add those names to the list of those for whom this Shabbat marks the Yort site, or the anniversary of a death in seasons past. Reuben Axelrod, Robert Baum, Tatiana Betterock, Dr. David Michael Berenbaum, Sylvia Bernstein, Gertrude Simon Bittman, Erwin F. Blank, Andrew S. Andy Boxer, Anthony John Cook, Martin Fish, Frida Friedman, Saul M. Gilbert, Julius Gilman, Norman Gluck, Lassie Goldberg, Louis B. Goldberg, Marvin Goldberg, Stephen Goldberg, Fred Goldsmith, Chester M. Goodstein, Julie Goralnik, Samuel Kaminsky, Susan Kaufman, Marcus S. K. Florence Kipper, A. Taya Klein, Jess R. Quartz, Morris S. Kramish, Lily Levine, Helene S. Love, Connie Hild Lundquist, Selma H. Manachoff, Donald H. Meyer, Ida L. Meyer, Dora Mintz, Paul Moore, Franklin James Newman, Myron Bud Newstetter, Anna Newlander, Norton Nelson, Joyce Zobel Opper, Herbert A. Patterson, Cecilia R. Pelton, Herbert Pelton, Gus Rechnitz, Marcus L. Robbins, Steve Sim Roberts, Marlene Rosenberg, Samuel G. Rosenthal, Esther Schwartz, Morris Schoen, Philip Scheiman, Stephen I. Shainer, Oscar M. Scher, Ruth K. Schwader, Rosa Simon, Louis Stern, Sally G. Stern, Dorothy Stoyer, Sam Stuhlbarg, Erwin J. Stryker, Harold Surrey, Joseph A. Tackert, Ruth Table, Barry Trevithick, Douglas Wagner, Leonard H. Wolf, Janice Lynn Yale, Judge Gilbert B. Yarchever, and Martin, Zing Martin Ziegler. And we add to that list the list of the names of ten of those who perished in the Holocaust from the city of Colleen. Arnoska Abel Sova, Leo Adler, Otto Adler, Rudolf Adler, Franziska Adlerova, Ida Adlerova, Olga Adlerova, Marie Adlerova, 
Vlasta Adlerova, and Zofie Adlerova. If there are any others that you are remembering this Shabbat, say their names out loud or type them in to the comments box on Facebook. And I ask anyone who is in a period of mourning to please rise physically or spiritually. And now the rest of us rise. We stand with you in solidarity from far away as we join together in the words of the Mourner's Kaddish. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei rabah be'alma divrach yirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayei chon u'v'yomei chon u'v'chayei d'chol b'yit Yisrael v'agala u'v'yizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehei shmei rabah mevorach le'olam u'le'olmei almaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase V'yit hadar, v'yit ale, v'yit halal, shemede kudisha, b'richu, le'ela min kol b'archata v'shirata, tush v'chata v'nechem ata, da'amiran v'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chaim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom v'imru mav, huya ase shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us say, Amen. Zichronam livracha, we remember them. Zichronam livracha, we remember announcements before we conclude this morning. First of all, we will end Shabbat together at 7 p.m. with Schwader. We're going to have Schwader Havdala. And so um, at uh, 7, we will be on the website channel 1 or on the Schwader Facebook page. Um, but we'll share it to our Facebook page so that you can find it right here on uh, the main Temple Emmanuel Denver Facebook page if that is where you usually go. Um, and that's, that's, there's not so much else this week. It's a regular week, a couple of uh, long-term announcements. Don't forget that we are virtual for the, for the foreseeable future. Um, the building is closed, but we are not. If you need things, um, please reach out. Don't forget that you can reach your clergy um, for pastoral care needs at care at emmanueldenver.org. There's also an emergency cell phone number that is posted on the website so you can get a hold of us anytime you need uh, even though we're not in the building. Um, and uh, check out all of your publications for upcoming events. A quick note about the wildfires that are um, plaguing our state and that we deeply, deeply hope are going to respond so well to the 20 inches of snow that we really, really hope are going to fall in the mountains. Um, we have a list of places from the governor's office that are accepting donations and that um, are the best place right now to channel donations so that we can make sure people who have needs right now get those needs met. And we said this last night, but just in case you didn't hear it, one of the things that uh, the state is asking for, especially the Department of Transportation, is should you happen to be a person who likes to spend time in the mountains um, and who drives up and down all the time, Try not to right now. One of the things that everybody is very, very worried about is what will happen when the roads get bad, uh, which they are, I'm sure, bound to do in the next 12 or 24 hours, and emergency vehicles need to get through, going every direction, going to every part of our state. And so if you can stay put, stay in Denver, please do so, so that not only can our emergency vehicles get where they need to go, but so that you are not put in danger. Um, it certainly doesn't help anything if we've got pileups on the icy roads because uh, we're trying to get our um, first responders where they need to be. So um, with that, Steve, anything that I'm missing for announcements? I don't think so. Okay, let's close with a song. <laughs> As we move into this final week before an election, and as we move what it seems to be deeper into the heart of this pandemic this week as numbers hit an all-time high yesterday and as we struggle with these fires and so many things going on in our lives we 
We return again to our plea, our daily, multiple times daily request to God for peace. Oh, se shalom bim romav, God who makes peace high up in the heavens. Please, please send some peace down here for all of us, for all the people of Israel, and for all the people of the world. Oh, se shalom bim romav, uya se shalom ale. May it be your will, God, that we have 20 inches of snow, that we bring moisture to our dry, dry land, that we act responsibly, that we take care of each other, that we keep away from each other, that we do what we each need to do in order to keep each other and our um, beautiful state as safe as possible. Uh, we all will work toward being holy and being righteous, but don't forget that you don't have to be holy all the time, and we have to take care of ourselves too. And so with that, we ask you, God, Tatsi Deinu L'Shalom, help our steps be steps toward peace. Tadri Chenu L'Shalom, please guide us on paths of peace as we depart from this service together, and we say to each of you, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>